voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those who are off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep. But you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holding the one. 
one lamb in the home. Well, the others may be following it. It is a very powerful image. When Jesus gave that image in the Gospels 2,000 years ago, the people could relate to it. They showed it, they saw the shepherds everywhere. They knew the routine. They go out in the morning, open up the gates, and they made special sounds for their sheep, their flock, to follow. They wouldn't follow the voice of any other one. But somehow they're trained to recognize that one sheep, that one shepherd, hear his voice, and they follow him. Others can make all the noise they want, they'll just stand there and do a That's what Jesus tells us today on this fourth Sunday of Africa, of Easter. How he is the good shepherd. How we, because of our baptism, belong to his flock. How we, we hear his voice and follow him. But also there's another image Jesus gives. One that I think most of us don't understand. We really talk about it. We only hear it on a Sunday every three years. Because when we have the rest of John's Gospel, chapter 10, God Jesus the good shepherd. Today we have this other image of Jesus as the gate. Now through him the flock will go. I will come back in the evening. Now as that gate, which is often a very narrow gate, will protect his flock and keep them safe from thieves and from robbers, from those who are going to harm the flock. In many ways the image of the gate echoes what we hear in the second reading. Letter of Peter. When he speaks of Christ, being the shepherd and the guardian of our souls, Christ guards us and protects us by the power of his cross, by his love and mercy. He keeps us safe. Probably the only church's image was very powerful for them, which leaves the great persecution to often begin by the various authorities, especially the Romans. They knew Christ was that gate and would protect them, keep them safe. Even though they faced exile, or imprisonment, or torture, or even death. They knew that Christ, that shepherd and guardian of their souls, would keep them safe and bring them to that life abundantly in promises, as we heard at the end of the gospel. But it's still true today. Perhaps in many parts of the world, people relate to this gospel. Christ being the gate and what that image means. As many face suffering persecution because of their faith. We don't hear it a lot in the secular papers or even on the news. But many Catholic news and radio stations and TV programs really share the truth of what's going on with our brothers and sisters who are suffering from the faith almost on a daily basis. Whether in Syria Lebanon, or Iraq, or Egypt, or in other parts of the world, like the Central African Republic. People go to church, hoping that there will be a church there, hoping the priests have not been killed or killed, hoping that as they end the liturgy, as they return home, they won't be have rocks on them, or a car exploding before their church, killing hundreds of people. Very few people talk about it. All of become very critical of the various governments and not doing anything about it, almost ignoring the fellow Christians who look to Christ as their shepherd, who look to Christ as their king during very difficult and painful moments. We see in the past several weeks where almost 300 girls in Nigeria were kidnapped from school by a group of fanatics. <coughs> Some of them may have been killed. And this threat's about selling them to slavery. So we told you about back in this day and age. But it's a very real thing for people in Nigeria and in other parts of the world. Yet we come to safety of our own church, to rejoice in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, to hear that voice of the good shepherd who calls us to follow him, who brings us to the fullness of life through his cross and resurrection, through our share in the universe. We join our prayer with those of our brothers and sisters on this fourth Sunday of Easter. May Christ the shepherd and guardian of our souls will walk
walk with us. That we may hear his voice alone. Follow him to salvation. That as that gate, he may protect us and protect our suffering brothers and sisters. That we may come to know that gift is given to us. 